Okay guys, so uh, I mentioned some time ago I was going to do a video about packing all my fishing gear. Well, it's been raining like crazy up here in Alaska, so I'm finally getting to it. And uh, I think I'm just going to start here and work my way around. There's a lot of stuff to go over. So uh, first thing, let's go ahead and take a look at some fishing rods. Okay, uh, on the boat, I like to have a couple of uh, seven foot uh, heavy duty, medium heavy duty action spinning rods and reels to go with them. I also like to have two heavy uh, boat rods for trolling uh, behind me, for trolling behind the boat. Now these don't have to be very long, you're not going to be casting with these. Uh, we're just going to be trolling uh, behind the boat with these. And I particularly, I, I've got I've got a backup one, I actually have three. But I just recently bought this one, and I have to admit, I kind of prefer it. It's a, it's made by Penn. It's a Senator to match up with their Senator reels. Uh, I've got a couple of them, and I like them. Uh, it's got a, uh, a wheeled uh, eyes and a wheeled tip, which helps when you're, see if I can get that in the picture over there. I know that's focusing, but it's a wheeled tip. Uh, for having uh, fishing uh, pretty heavy fish now. I really don't think I'm gonna need to use these a lot I'm not gonna be targeting giant tuna and marlin and that kind of stuff Which these are kind of light to handle for those but they can uh, But I still think it's a good idea to have uh, a Little bit of heavier tackle because it just makes it easier on me when I'm trying to reel them in uh, and then I like to have a couple of lighter uh, lighter spinning rods. Um, I actually, in moving stuff around, just broke one. So now I only have one. And I have to, I'm going to buy a second one. Uh, light, medium duty uh, spinning rods. And uh, what I don't have here, because I have them in storage in Montana, I also have some bait casting rods as well. Um, I don't know if anybody knows what this is. But uh, this is a uh, really little lightweight ice fishing rod. But I find it really good for catching bait uh, fish and stuff like that. Using a sabiki rig to catch bait fish. So it's, uh, it's pretty handy in that regard. So good thing to have. Okay. Uh, while I'm moving down the table here, I'm just going to start here and work my way around with various tools. Try to keep myself some workspace here. Uh, very important item to have on the boat good pair of binoculars. Um, if you can get some that are image stabilized, that's great. Uh, a little outside my budget. Uh, so I just got a, a decent, actually I have two, I've got two larger size set of binos and a couple smaller set of binos, but good binos. When you're out fishing uh, or you're just out cruising in your boat, you want to look for places where there's a lot of birds getting down into the water. That tells you there's bait fish there. If there's bait fish there, then, uh, then that's where the big fish are that you might want to target, the pelagics anyway. So good idea to always have binos with you as part of your fishing gear. Hook remover, great little tool. Um, you hook this onto your fishing line, you slide it down towards the fish holding your line with this hand, and then from this you can kind of turn the hook upside down. Uh, it'll actually twist it around and you can get it out of the fish's mouth easier. Particularly handy with toothy critters like unhooking a shark or unhooking uh, a barracuda or a, a wahoo or something like that that you don't really want to get too close to those chompers. So good idea to have a good stout hook remover for some of the nastier fish out there. Uh, good idea to have some sunglasses. In fact, probably be a good idea for me to be wearing them here today since we're out here in such bright sunny days. But uh, if you're gonna get sunglasses, make sure they're polarized so that uh, you've got that available to you. Okay, now we're gonna skip over into a whole nother genre of, of uh, fish collection. I, I kind of briefly talked about this the other day. Uh, this is my brand new pole spear. Uh, this one is uh, made by Polantic, P-A-L-A-N-T-I-C, Polantic. I don't know, I kind of liked it. It was uh, inexpensive. They're very, very simple um, to use. This one's a fiberglass rod. 
two piece which I like because the fiberglass will break but it won't bend so it'll take the shock of a pretty good hit it comes with uh, three different tips um, sort of a frog gag type trident and uh, then more of a flexible type uh, trident a little longer spear type trident and then also a uh, uh, flipper type uh, pointed got a little flipper cup stops the fish from coming off the spear so three different points depending on your application really simple to use this you simply hook your arm through it if you're going to be shooting something really short you know short range shot or you can grab it with your hand if you want to get a little longer range shot and shoot at a fish that's in the reef or something uh, not made for any great distances not made for really shooting past the length of the shaft uh, but still a handy little bit of kit to have with you. Um, I will probably rig up another point for this that will come out and just be an L so I can carry this as a tickle stick for what I'm going after lobsters as well. And uh, all you really need for catching lobsters is you need a, a thing like that and then you need a net. Um, probably something a little bit bigger than this fly fishing net. Uh, I've got, I just don't, I have them packed away in a bag. I don't want to get them all out. I have a whole bunch of different nets. I've got great big nets. I've got long handled nets that have small heads. Some have fine mesh. Some have big mesh. Uh, they all have different applications. And you do need a few different ones. Like if you want to do a drift uh, fish for shrimp, you can set up on a, on a spillway where water comes through and uh, put lights in the water. Uh, down deep and then use a very fine mesh a net like this one but with a long handle and as you see the shrimp floating down by you you simply just scoop them up and you know I know in Florida you can fill a five gallon bucket full of shrimp and that's your day's take so it can be pretty handy so hang on we'll get to those here in a minute okay more rods this is my uh, fly fishing rods I don't know if I can get them out of here I have way too many in here for what I have okay starting to come out all right anybody else in there nope let me put this off to the side it's got a little locking lid I've taped it so it can't change its length any so I don't have to worry about it crushing anything um, I have uh, a bunch of different fly rods guys I've got uh, oh you know what, I have a whole nother rod tube of, uh, of fly rods that's not even here, so I'll have to find that. Um, these, I believe, are my three weights. Looks like it, yep, these are my three weight rods from uh, Temple Fork Outfitters. I really like Temple Fork Outfitters. So these are three weight fly rods um, made for fly fishing the wee little stuff. Um, I've got three weight, six weight, eight weight, and uh, 12 weight. And what that's referring to is the weight of the uh, line that the rod and reel are set up to handle. I like to do a lot of fly fishing, so uh, I'm really looking forward to getting these out and doing some fly fishing with them. Uh, I'm really, <laughs> really looking forward to getting out and doing some fly fishing. Uh, it is my favorite way to fish, actually. Uh, it's because it's not just catching fish, you know. I mean, sure, there's that. You're going to catch fish. You're going to have dinner. But it, it, it introduces almost more of a, well, an art form to it. You know, it almost becomes more of a, of a, of a ballet of, a, well, just an art form, you know, being able to, to play the line out and we'll have videos about this once we're out cruising you'll see them but i'll have videos out with me chasing those and then uh, these are also uh, these are my bigger fly rods here again uh, temple fork outfitters i just happen to like them uh, they're not really a sponsor they're not paying me to say this um, but they did uh, get me a hell of a discount on these rods so um so I guess in some way they have contributed to the cause. And this is just an absolutely gorgeous fly rod. Um, 
Actually, this is parts of two rods here. Okay. Guess I have parts from the other rod in here. You got to line up the little dots. This one here is my eight weight. So that goes on next. Those two go with the other one. And. Oh, one more section, sorry. That's right, this is a four piece, not a three piece. And that goes on and that goes on. You know, when you're dealing with fishing rods, having a multi-part rod can be difficult. You can see how long that is. I don't even see that in the camera, but this is a eight foot long, maybe eight and a half foot long fly rod. Uh, and I've got the reels, I'll get those out here in just a little bit, but just a wonderful rod to fish with. Just can't tell you how much. I, I really dislike having multi-part rods, but in the reality of it is, you know, it's very hard to transport something that is eight, nine, ten feet long. And so we end up having to, uh, to make it packable, we got to break them up into smaller pieces. So, okay, along the lines of fly fishing, We'll stick in that genre for a moment. You have to have fly fishing gear. And, uh, and you have to have flies, and you have to have tippet, and you have to have just a whole bunch of tools. Um, I, have, I have lots of assortments of different flies to choose from. Um, hundreds, hundreds of flies, plus I do tie my own. Uh, everything from little salmon flies to trout flies to little woolly booger flies, um, parachute atoms and that kind of stuff. Um, this bag also has, uh, I have a bunch of uh, tippet material here, um, different size. I got everything here from, what do I have? I have 3X down to 8X, 7X, 8X tippets. So I've got some pretty fine stuff for going on the three weight rods. Um, anyhow, so this is one, one bag of fly fishing tackle. I have a second, I have a second bag of fly fishing tackle here. And somewhere around here I got a third. See this has got My eight and ten weight reels, right there, and a bunch of streamers. Now I actually thought I had lost this bag. I thought I had lost this bag while I was traveling uh, down to Florida, but apparently I'd left it here in Alaska. So we have some long streamers that go with uh, for fly fishing. Give me an example of what I mean. That's a fly for my. 10 weight and 12 weight rods. Um, it's got a hook here and a hook here. This would be great for tuna, uh, a large mahi-mahi. Um, uh, what else? Um, wahoo. Any of the big toothy species that, uh, that have a lot of speed to them. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a real nice presentation. So you, and, and you have to have you know, not just one of these. You've got to have a myriad of them in different colors uh, because depending on the amount of ambient daylight you're going to want a lighter or darker fly so that'll all change and here's another a little bit smaller one um, how do I get in this lower part of this bag aha front in here I have a whole bunch of trays and in the trays, I have just a myriad of different uh, patterns, like, see if I can get this on the camera. Whoop, let me get that moved over. Look at that. Little crab. See that little crab pattern? That's good for uh, uh, tarpon and the like. And then you have other ones that kind of also look like little crabs. And those are good. And then we have other ones that look like little shrimps. And you got little flies like that look like little shrimps. So those are good. So you need to have this uh, big selection of stuff because 
you know, you never know what you're going to be fishing for or where you're going to be fishing for it. Um, sometimes you want something kind of, kind of funky and furry, you know, like, whoop, they're sticking together. Like these kind of guys. Well, this is actually two together here. But I have one, uh, light colored ones and dark colored ones, depending on, but you can see that fly is about four inches long. And, uh, We'll replicate different things in different waters. When we're sailing around the world, we have no idea what we're going to hit. So we got to be prepared for a whole lot of different things. Um, again, we have more streamers, uh, such as, you know, like this, to replicate a bait fish. We also have little poppers. See if you can see. Whoop. What did I drop there? A little piece of plastic. Better pick that up or the dog will eat it. Hopefully I'll edit that out of the shot. We also have little poppers like this. I don't know how well you can see that. But uh, these are great with the fly rod on the surface. Um, you know, you, you, you cast them out and then you give it a little pop, pop, pop on the surface and it makes a little noise and attracts some fish. So for some species, that'll be really handy. And then in this one, we've got some more of the long furry type ones. But then we also have got, this is a, a very, uh, very successful one. Let me come around and show this one to you. This is, mimics sort of the, uh, the bait fish that you'll see up at the top. It has a very metallic looking color to it. Hooks, uh, trailing hook and a lead hook. It's on a wire leader. So that if we get something really toothy, like a barracuda or something like that going after it, his teeth won't bite through this port. And then that's got a monofilament, uh, uh, a leader on top of that even so interesting interesting bait uh, very handy to have for some of the uh, shallow water fish that we hit uh, that have lots of teeth like your barracudas and that sort of thing all right all right so fly fishing gear I don't have a lot of fly fishing gear in my estimation I've got, I've got some, um, but I don't have a lot. Uh, probably only, I don't know, five or six pounds worth of fly fishing gear. So, um, but I have some more here. I have come to use these little bags on the sailboat. These are like uh, bags you buy at the grocery store you know, to keep your stuff in. And I have found them to be really handy on the boat uh, for storing tackle because it can store tackle in a fairly confined spot. You can always find a place to throw a soft-sided bag as opposed to the big heavy plastic boxes, which I'll get down to in a minute. We're, we're trying to consolidate these and get rid of these big boxes and kind of get down more into these bags, so. Okay, so I have uh, fly reels. Uh, this one here is my newest one. It's my favorite. Should be an idea of the size of the reel we use on a fly rod. Uh, this is set up with uh, a weight forward fly line uh, set up for my 12 weight rod. And again, this is a TFO Temple Fork Outfitters reel. And then I have these two also from Temple Fork, uh, the, the 0375s, one in 10 weight and one in eight weight. So I got lots of gear. Okay, another thing we need for traveling around the world, we need fishing line. Cannot have enough fishing line. Um, I don't like seeing fishing line down on the reefs and stuff and creating landfill and problems but I'm also an advocate of having adequately sized fishing line so that you can catch the fish and bring it in pretty quickly. The longer it stays in the water flopping around fighting you, uh, the more chances there is of some other fish like a shark or something coming along and eating it. So uh, I like to have lots of fl uh, fishing line. I like to have heavy line. I am not an advocate of trying to go super light to catch great big fish and set some kind of record or something. I have absolutely no interest in that. I fish to eat. I do not fish for trophies or anything like that. So, 
Okay, going back into some more gear type stuff. Uh, always good to have a little fighting thing when you're fishing, catching big fish. You can strap this on pretty quick and protect your belly from the end of your fly rod or end of your fishing rod. Um, here's an interesting piece of kit. <clears throat> this is a flasher that mounts onto a planing board. On a sailboat, I've got a fairly narrow back end. So in order to have more lines in the water and keep them from being tangled, I'll use a planer board like this. It will catch the water, see it's weighted, and it's got this plastic scoop on it and the funny bends in this metal piece. It'll catch the water and pull this out away from the boat, planing away from the boat. This will flash in the water and attract fish. And then on the end of this, I will attach the, uh, the baits or the lures that I'll use. Now what happens is this is towing in the water this way. When a fish catches it, it slides that up to the front like that, and then this will bring the line up to the surface and no longer be pulling it away from the boat, and you can ring it, reel it in pretty quickly. So, flasher and planer board. Downriggers. <laughs> Where's my downrigger ball? Where's the downrigger ball? I got the release there. Maybe it's in here. Hold on a second. Something's in the wrong bag. Aha. Ugh. Okay. Downrigger balls. In this case, this is an eight pound lead weight that I can tie onto the back of the boat. That's gonna drop down very deep or as deep as I want to depending on how much line I lay out. I can then attach to the back of this a lure or a, you know, a long line, and a long piece of fishing line and then a lure. Um, uh, or what I would probably do is on the line that's connecting this to the boat, I will bring a uh, line down from the boat and I will catch into this clip. You see that clip on here. And what this clip does is it'll connect to the line. It clips on here onto the line that holds the downrigger out. And then the fishing line goes through this little quick release quick release clamp. So this will hold the line so as from the fishing rod you've probably seen some some fishing shows where the guy's fishing line is going like straight down in the water. Well that's because he's using a downrigger. That line will come all the way down to here and then go straight out back as the boat's moving forward. The fish pulls on that, it pops the line out of this clip and now you just have the fish directly connected up to the rod and your downrigger weight is just hanging down below. So with the addition of a downrigger ball, or two of them, that gives you two lines down really deep. With your planer boards, that can give you two lines out really wide. Then you can put two rods on the corner of your boat and have those out medium depth, and then have one out in the middle up really short. And then in addition to that, I would also put a, uh, a dredge uh, on a short line right directly behind the boat that'll mimic a school of bait fish. Um, but I don't have a dredge here. I'll show here. I'll, uh, there's a picture of one. I'll bring a picture up. You can see it. So that's what a dredge looks like. Now, aside from the big dredges, we also have devices like this. This is a, uh, a halibut spreader arm. Let's see if I can hand that in a little closer so you can see it. And it's a spreader arm. What you do is you Catch your fishing line here, your weight here, and then your hook and bait go onto here. And what this does is separates the weight from the line. So when you throw this in the water and you're, you're trolling this or dragging this or bumping this along the bottom, the, the fish is going to come up and hit the bait, which is going to be about back here someplace and be far, further away from the weight uh, so they won't be so disturbed by it. So these are little spreader arms to, to uh, well, work that little trick of separating them out a little bit. Okay. Before we get into too much more tackle, uh, let me show you some of the reels I like to use. Um, for my large, well I showed you my fly reels, okay. These are the reels that I like to use for my boat rods. Uh, this is a Penn 340 GT. This is a Penn Senator 114H. Uh, both of these are rigged with uh, 50 and I'm sorry, 60 and 30 pound line. Um, 
good solid heavy duty reels. I keep them well greased and well taken care of so they're always right ready to go. Then on top of that, I will put on the spinning rods. Remember I said I have some medium weight spinning rods. I'll use some spinning reels. And I've just got a selection of them here. Uh, this is a, uh, a pen slammer, um, a 560 slammer. This is a pen battle two it's called. So on the slammer I'm keeping 20 to 30 pound line. On the smaller pen I'm keeping uh, 15 to 20 pound line. And uh, then I also have this NLF. This was given to me by a fellow making a new line of reels, NLF. This is an NLF 70. I got to tell you, I really like it. Uh, I've not seen those reels being sold anywhere, but he gave me one to try out and talk about, so we're going to talk about it. <clears throat> okay, and then in addition to those reels, I also have... Put away. Okay. I don't have them out. I have other reels. Ah, here we go. Here's some other reels. Some other lighter spinning reels and stuff. Um, and some terminal tackle. More flashers. All right. Let me move into the next thing, which I want to talk about, which is going to... Let's talk about uh, baits and lures. Uh, again, always a good idea to have flashers with you. Uh, again, more... More flies, a myriad of different colors, assortments, shapes, everything from uh, little tiny uh, mosquito-like things up to things that look like frogs, things that look like spiders. Um, I'm going to be sailing around the world. So I'm going to be fishing in places where there's going to be just a myriad of different uh, insects. And one of the keys to fly fishing is you got to match the hatch. you got to figure out what the fish are eating and, and match that hatch. So... When you're traveling around the world, you're going to have to be prepared for a wide spectrum of things. So whether or not I'm fishing with this little teeny tiny midge that you can barely even see, I think even if I bring it right up to the camera, you could probably barely even make that out, a little tiny midge, about the size of a housefly or small housefly, up to baits like this. Because who knows what I'm going to be targeting and where I'm going to be targeting it. So you need to have a real broad spectrum of lures. And once again, you simply cannot have, you simply cannot have enough. There's no such thing as, as having too much fishing tackle. And I know ladies, you're going to get upset with your husbands or whatever for carrying so much tackle with them and stuff. Um, if, you're, if you're a cruiser and you're sailing around the world and you're serious about being able to eat dinner you're just going to need a bunch of stuff uh baits like this diver made to go down fairly deep depending on your speed this guy is going to be at anywhere from a foot to 10 feet depending on how far you how fast you pull them uh little weighted jigs like this got a heavy lead weight in the front made to go down bounce on the bottom in fact i have a I have a bunch of these of different sizes, everything up to this, what is this, a uh, heavy 8 ounce down to, uh, you know, quarter ounce uh, ones like that. So this, by the way, is a bait trap for my shrimp pots. You put your bait inside this net, this metal thing, and it uh, lets the smell get out. And I'll show you those here in just a moment. So you really, I can't emphasize enough the need for lots of different assortments of different stuff and be able to do different techniques casting with spinning rods trolling with boat rods having fly rods for some real finesse fishing okay here's some more uh oh this is an interesting box so let me show you this box here real quick got some interesting stuff in here first of all we have a plug that we would tie on we could either cast this or troll this behind the boat got a little bit of a lip so it goes deep but this replicates a squid for using squid for bait we have some streamers for fly fishing we have got a heavy uh, vertical jig you see this guy see how thin he is he's really thin but he's wide that way supposed to look like a ribbon fish 
you uh, you fish this by dropping it straight up and down the water column this way. Again, it simulates a squid. So those tend to be highly effective. Um, and then I have squid jigs. You see that? You make that out? Squid jig? Got lots of little hooks on the bottom. This white part's actually glow in the dark, so you hit that with a light. But then you can you can drop that down and catch squid. Now it's got an eye at either end, both here and at the bottom. So what you can do is you can put three or four of these in a row and make a daisy chain out of them when you're bouncing them on the bottom. Okay, an additional terminal tackle. Terminal tackle meaning all those extra little bits and stuff that you need. You cannot have enough good heavy duty um, swivels. You can't have enough wire, stainless steel wire leaders, especially for them toothy fish areas. You need a good diamond hook hone. Keep your, ho keep your hook sharp. Because you're going to want to be whittling on those and keeping those in top condition all the time. So, this is sort of a mixed bag in that one. Alright. Trolling gear. Here we have a whole bunch of different stuff. Notice all the different colors, okay? A lot of different colors. Some light colored, some dark colored, some big, some small. Some of these have, like this guy here, has a weighted head. So he'll troll a little deeper. Some guy like this guy here doesn't have a weighted head. He's got, he's very lightweight, so he'll stay up on the surface. And he's got a cup face on him, so he'll He'll catch a lot of uh, bubbles on the top and make a lot of racket up on the surface. Here's a little wire needle, a little purpley guy, a little pink. Pinks, purples, yellows, whites, uh, light colors, dark colors. You simply cannot have enough variety because depending on how sunny or cloudy it is, you may have to adjust your baits to, uh, to the elements. The, surprisingly, the sunnier it is outside, the lighter colored you want your bait. The darker and more overcast it is outside, then the darker you want your bait. Now that kind of goes against you know logic. You would think you would want it just the opposite way. When there's low light, you want something lighter, easier for the fish to see. But in fact, it's just the opposite. Okay, more trolling toys. We have a lot of different the varieties here. We have big rubbery squid like things and big little fishes um, for trolling behind the boat these are both on monofilament leaders but I also rig some of these up on stainless steel uh, rigging if the need be got some large baits again these are for a little bit bigger fish than what we've been talking about up to this point um, Catching your big tunas and that kind of stuff. These are weighted. Some of them have feathers. I find these yellow feather ones to be really effective, by the way. All steel leaders. These are basically set up for uh, large wahoo uh, and that sort of uh, species. You know, big, big game, but toothy. So, I do not, as a general rule, target any billfish. Uh, I don't go after swordfish or marlin. Uh, I just haven't, as a practice, done that. So, here's another big one. This has been really effective for me on uh, mahi mahi, uh, not mahi, uh, wahoo. It's a good wahoo bait. And wahoos are good eating, so I like catching wahoo. Yeah, what else we got? And just some more of the same thing. Okay, hard water. When you're rigging some of these baits up, sometimes you have to actually get involved in, in doing some real rigging, you know, uh, changing out the wiring and the harness and redoing the hooks and stuff on there. So I always recommend that people should have a, a rigging kit with them. And I have one here someplace. Let me see if it's in this one. Now I'll have to figure out where it is. Ah, here it is, yep. I've got it sealed up because it's got a lot of little bits in it. But I've got a rigging kit with a pair of pliers on there for changing stuff. And I keep some heavy-duty hard wire, 180 pound, 80 pound, 200 pound hard wire for doing my rigging in. Um, 
you're not going to have much of a fish that's going to bite through 180 pound test wire so when you're dealing with some of your big toothy guys you want some heavy rigging and you want a good rigging kit so you can rig up your baits and stuff and that requires a little rigging tool to go with it all right all right that's that stuff more glow in the bark uh glow in the dark squid baits um these are nets for holding uh bait inside of my uh my crab pots which i don't have here with me so i'll show a picture of what a crab pot looks like uh these go to my crab pots which are down in storage in montana you know sort of bobbers more glow in the dark rigged squid baits diving bait miscellaneous hooks <laughs> More flies for fly fishing, uh, gear hammock for storing stuff, 200-pound uh, test leader material, again, for rigging, flashers, uh, pliers to work on stuff, air pumps for bumping inflation into stuff to give them a little bit more buoyancy, different juices to uh, make them more yummy for the fish that actually troll by scent. Any more jig heads. Some sealant, more jig heads, some flares. I've got some flares in there. More flies. All right. In case you haven't noticed, the theme of more flies. Uh, terminal tackle, little hooks, uh, rigging, weights. Um, down, down. You just can't have enough of this stuff, guys. Little weighted. Uh, again, more squid type stuff. Squid are a big bait uh, in the water, uh, down in the lower water column. Not so much up on the surface. Up on the surface, it's more like flying fish, some of the more needle fish. Uh, but for in the, uh, down, down deeper, squid are a good bait. Now this is uh, one of my three weight reels. I don't know why it's in this bag. Huh. Two of my three weight reels are in this bag. And not in their case. Bad grandpa. Yep, so you can see the difference. <laughs> Let me show you that. Uh, again, talking about the broad spectrum. 12 weight fly reel, 3 weight fly reel. Big difference. This is for wee little tiny fish that you're trying to finesse. This is for some other big fish up on the surface. So. But I don't know what I'm going to run into selling around the world. And I like to fish in all kinds of conditions. So I need to have the ability to be able to switch up and go back and forth. So uh, if anything, I think what I need is probably, and I don't have them here. I have a bunch of six weight reels in that bag. I don't know where my six weight rods are. Okay, here we go. Now I made this rod tube myself and I really like it. It's a piece of three inch PVC with threaded caps on either end. Makes it really easy to store stuff, to transport stuff on the flights, on airplanes and stuff, and to get stuff in and out. Now, I had a bunch of these, and I actually, uh, I had to get rid of a bunch of them at the auctions, because I really just had way too many. Uh, these are six weight rods, and I think I've only got three, yeah, I've got three six weight rods here. One of these is an old favorite of mine that a friend of mine custom made for me many years ago. So I've got two three weights, I've got three six weights, and then I've got the eight weight and ten weight or twelve weight rod. So I think I'm good with fly rods. In fact, I've got enough fly rods here. I might even make some as gifts to people that are out, especially when I teach somebody how to fly fish. I might just do that, but I also need some rods for Donna because I guess she'll be fishing too And so this gives me enough rods for both of us Well, there you go. That's the That's those okay More halibut spreaders Can't have enough of the... ah. Parts repair parts uh, I got the rest of mine stuck away in these boxes, but these are just rod tips you know, you go out and you spend $100 on a dead fly rod, 
and you do something stupid and you break the tip off of it. This very quickly, very easily, you can glue on a new tip and fix your rod. So a critical piece of kit to make sure you always have with you is repair parts for your rods and your reels. Keep some grease and stuff and the right tools with you. Okay, let's move these out of the way. In the interest of not boring anybody any further, I'm only going to go through one of my big bags here. Only because I have too much, I know I have too much stuff, guys. Okay, but like I said, you can never have too much stuff. This one's getting dusty from being in the cabin, so I gotta, I gotta clean it up. Uh, extra pair of dark sunglasses. Uh, extra tools. Uh, scales for weighing fish. Um, apparently spinner baits. Oh, I gotta clean this up and straighten it out. I got some stuff needs organizing. Fishing line, fishing hooks, bobbers. You know, all the usual kind of stuff that you would have for going for a day of bass fishing. Um, Berkeley gulp baits of various assortments. More bobbers. More leader material and fishing line. Like I said, you never have enough fishing line, guys. You, you're, you're constantly going to be in a state of having to change and upgrade fishing line. Uh, fillet knives, always a good thing to have in your kit. I have mine in another bag that's not here. Actually, I have like four of them, but this pocket over here, again, is just more Berkeley Gulps and more fishing line. Lots and lots of fishing line. And some more uh, flashers. Okay, then up in top here, I've got... Okay, this, this box got bounced around last time I flew in the airline and so it got beat up so I got to do some repair work on this this one got it pretty bad because it's got a lot of weights in it but I'll kind of show you the kind of stuff that's in there uh, I got a lot of weights a lot of little jigs uh, some smaller squid jigs uh, assortment of hooks and tridents bunch of little baits Little squiggly baits, little uh, weighted uh, yellow furry jig heads, um, little sinkers of, of various sizes. So just sort of a mishmash in that drawer that needs fixed. I'm going to leave that out. I'll put some tape on it. See how bad the rest of these are. Okay. bunch of different things. I have some interesting, I bought these a long time ago. They're called the Flying Lore. It was one of those gimmicky things on TV. But I want to tell you guys, I have found it to be very useful. I can flip this underneath a piece of structure like a dock and skip it back up under the back of the dock where the fish are. So I found that to be pretty eff effective. Uh, some finned style weights, some Ford Fender material, that's a uh, long stainless steel wire with a flasher on it and a bunch of uh, things to create uh, movement in the water to attract fish. That's kind of a common piece of kit for salmon and uh, lake trout, that sort of thing. Um, plain old fashioned lures. Got a bunch of them that size. Again, more, uh, more lead weights, more uh, um, swivels of varying sizes um, and I also have some more uh, salmon gear in here we're up here in Alaska that we use okay this one has uh, bobbers eagle claw fish hooks regular plain little old, uh, fish hooks and again some more uh, little minnow shaped uh, baits this one's got a bunch of uh, like uh, red fox, you know, little spinner baits with little feathers on them and stuff. Uh, some big uh, bulbous plugs for working the surface. Um, uh, red devil type lures. These are metal spoon type lures for going down deep. You simply cannot have a big enough variety. You know, 
if you're going to go sail around the world, probably my best advice to you would be to go into a really well-stocked saltwater fishing supply pet place. Pretty much buy one at one or two or three of everything. I mean, it's really what it takes. Okay, this has got weights, hooks, some floats. I've got some lighted floats in here. These are bobbers that have lights in them for night fishing. Um, can be interesting. I've actually had a problem with them. You light the bobber and then the fish go up and try to eat the bobber and not the bait that's down in the water below them. So, okay, uh, again, in a series of different types of of baits and lures. I think if I just hold these up, you can kind of see right through the container what's in there. Whole bunch of different types of spinners and lures and baits and plugs, some divers, uh, some shallow, some deep. I have a little tool in there for cleaning out the eyes on lures because when they make them, sometimes they get paint in them. Makes it hard to get the fishing line through them. So I got this little deal to clean that out. And again, more lures, uh, more baits, and more of the little weighted yellow fluffy stuff. So, and then there's more in that box. Whew. Okay. And, uh, well, then that brings me down to my traps. Like I said, I don't have my crab trap here, so I will... Just showed a picture of a crab trap up so you can see what a crab trap looks like. I do have a couple of those that will be going on board with me. And then I have these shrimp traps, which are adjustable. I can turn it from a shrimp trap into a crab trap. They fit into this neat little bag. They're made by Flexbold. And uh, I have to admit, I really like them. I've used them a couple times up here in Alaska. They work very well. They fold up very well. So here's your, here's the whole trap. Well, what you do is you undo this snap and it opens up into a big old, well, let me get that open wider. Come on, oh, it won't go any wider, okay. Anyhow, this then opens up into a big wide trap that is about a foot tall. Come on. Now it's going to take me two hours to pack all this stuff back up. So. All right, there we go. Now you fold out these little doohickers here. And then this clips on there. Anyhow, you get the picture. You do that all the way around and you get nice little round openings for the shrimpies to get in there and get caught. Right, so I have two of those shrimp traps. Well, that's a three foot, probably a three foot diameter shrimp trap. There's two of them and they just pack up in a little bag. So, and then back to the nets. Uh, oh, on these shrimp traps, you got to use weighted line for them. This is a lead core uh, weighted line, leaded 5 16 leaded line. Uh, this is only one roll of 100 feet. I usually like to set these traps down two, 300 feet down up here in Alaska. I'll experiment with doing that as we travel around. So probably three of these spools of, of leaded line on each trap. And then on top of that, we have a float. Could be just a bleach bottle or something with the name of our boat on it and our name and address and phone number, that kind of stuff so they can find us. Um, but you have to use these leaded lines. Okay, last thing is next. I have a bunch of uh, nets, like I said earlier, uh, different sizes, floating handles. Um, this one's wood, so it floats, made by Broden. This is actually my old-time old favorite. Some newer ones that we bought later on. And then I also have a big bag of assorted nets that I put together inside of a trash bag. And in here, you can see how big the biggest one is. The others are smaller. They all have collapsible handles. So they all pack up in a much smaller package for traveling. That's what we need. So I can net out something as large as a medium-sized tuna, you know, down to a shrimp if I wanted to. Okay, well that is 
that's the crux of my fishing gear. That's the majority of the stuff that I'm taking with me as I sail around the world. So to recap, I have uh, two medium weight, one lightweight spinning rod. I'll have two medium weight and two lightweights. I have to buy the other rod. Uh, I will have two heavy boat rods, well three heavy boat rods, um, for trolling. I have uh, three six weight, two three weight, an eight weight, and twelve weight fly rods. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven fly rods. Let's see, I had seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. That's fifteen fishing rods I'm taking with me. And as many, if not more, fishing reels. I have a bunch of other reels put aside that I don't have out here that are, that are stuffed away in storage. I have to get those out. Uh, fishing reels for everything, for all the fly rods and all the spinning reels. A, a huge assortment of different types and shapes of bait. You simply can't have enough variety, guys. It's just not possible. It's just not possible to have enough variety. You have no idea what you're going to run into when you're sailing around the world fishing, so you just got to be prepared for almost anything. So I've got little tiny baits the size of a mosquito all the way up to baits, you know, the size of a foot long. So, and, and different shapes. I've got weights for trolling. I've got weights for jigging. Uh, I've got weights for bait casting with. Um, uh, I've got baits for skipping underneath docks. I've got fly, all different types of fly baits for all different types of fish. Everything from large streamers down to the little tiniest flies for the little tiny stuff. Um, I didn't see my sabiki rigs in here. I know I've got a bag somewhere full of sabiki rigs. Now what a sabiki rig is, it's, uh, it's like a whole bunch of small flies tied in one long string. Usually it's about four, five, six feet long. Great for gathering bait fish if you want to cut use cut bait on some of your hooks and stuff. Um, up here in Alaska, we do a lot of cut bait fishing, so that's kind of a common thing for us to do. What else? I don't know. I'm tired of going through all that. So if you guys have any questions, then, then let me know. Ask uh, in the comments down below. Uh, please do like and subscribe. If you like this kind of thing, and we'll go from there. Apparently my son's calling me, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.